Near the end of the last ice age, a massive glacier over a mile high crept down from the north into what is now known as the Clark Ford River Valley between Idaho and Montana, damming the rivers and creeks that ran through there. As the water began backing up, a massive lake took form, forking out through the various channels, stretching through large portions of the area of northern and central Montana. The lake inundated over 300 square miles and 600 cubic miles of water and had a depth of 2,000 feet. Eventually, the glacier dam began to crack. Streams tore at its base, eating away the foundation sides until the dam tore apart, releasing it in an instant, a tsunami of water over a mile high upon the land below. The rate of water that poured through was ten times that than all the rivers on Earth at this time. The flood roared in two directions, swamping the lands of Idaho, Washington, and Oregon with a torrent of water that was hundreds of feet high. The ripples you see when you stare at the bottom of a creek were so massive that they dwarfed houses, and the plunge pools of those ancient waterfalls are not so easily identified until you are a thousand feet in the air. Only when you have been able to get the distance of height does the unimaginable become comprehensible, and with it a shocking realization of what it must have been like for those caught in its path. Standing there and hearing the roar, and to look up and see a wall of water stretching as far as the eye can see into the sky above. The hundred foot tall evergreen trees are a little more than blades of grass, and you are nothing more than a microbial insect. There is no point in running or screaming. The end has come, and nothing can save you. The noise and roar become deafening as the flood approaches. The air is being pushed forward and soon a fine spray splashes and hurricane winds tear at your hair and clothing. Day becomes night and still you wait. As the end nears the ground trembles and upheaves, forcing you to your knees. Around you, the land screeches for mercy, but there is none. Maybe you take one last breath and one last look at a world that has now come to an end. If you have a partner, maybe you grab their hand and give it a squeeze. There is some small measure that you both will go to the hereafter together along with everything else. Then it hits, and the power is such that your body is instantly pulverized. One minute you are there, and the next you are not, just like the basalt foundation of the land you stand on that not even your mightiest tools could break. There is no pain, no suffering, no recognition that you have even died. The sheer immense scale of this flood is difficult to imagine. Only when one travels in those gorges, walks on the rising lines of an ancient Lake Mazola shore, and stands looking down into the gouged out remains of an ancient waterfall, does the reality of what happened begins to hit. Traveling westward and south, one can find torn boulders laying alone and hundreds of miles from their brothers, borne forth to strange lands and icebergs the size of mountains. Those giant boulders laying alone in fields of grass have become tourist attractions and curiosities today. I welcome you to stay a while, to roam among the paths of a land torn asunder by forces that were biblical in nature. To imagine like I am what it would have been like to stand upon a mountain peak and see the land you love become torrents of hundred foot high rapids as to see mountain high icebergs floating by. In this new series of Roaming the Outline, we will explore the territories of the greatest glacial flood from Lake Missoula to the iceberg carried boulders and to the ocean shore where the flood finally met its end. We are about to enter the Scablands, and I hope you will join with me on this ride.